Hello and welcome. My name is Rich Ryan. Today, my friend Kelly Schweikart and I, we're bringing you the map review of the 2022 Tri-State Beast in Vernon, New Jersey. So we do a deep dive on this course. This preview gets a little bit longer because the course is a little bit longer and we have a lot of good tips to give you about this course in particular. I've run this venue four to five times. Callie has done about the same, and she's actually won at this venue before. So we have some awesome tips and tricks about what to expect from this and uh, some different ways to go about how to uh, attack the race in terms of strategy and some of the different obstacles and what you could expect. So I want to take some time to thank our Patreon members who help support the athletes here at Torque. If you are interested in being a Patreon member, you can check the link down in the notes. You'll get some early access to these type of map reviews and some different swag and discounts and things like that. So, and most importantly, you get to support the athletes within the sport of OCR. So we really appreciate you as Patreon members. So thank you. All right, let's get into it. All right, we're here. Kelly Schweikart, hello. Hello. So this is going to be a, a good one for us. This is the first place, this is the first venue that I ever ran like an outdoor Spartan race, like in, in 2016, I believe. It's what, what started my whole thing. Uh, and this was one of the first venues where you won a race, right? Was this also your first venue? It was my first. So this was the one that started it all for me, uh, 2015 Super in like October. And at that point, it was kind of just for fun and didn't really realize there was like an elite competitive side until 2017 or so. Hmm. Um, but then I ran ran it here again in 2017. And uh, it was my first elite win and then first beast elite win. A lot of sentimental value here. I love this venue. It is definitely a challenging course. It's going to be pretty technical, pretty pretty rocky, lots of roots. If you've run it in the fall, like the, the foliage comes onto the ground. It makes it ex extra sketchy. Um but looking at, at the course this year, it doesn't look like it's too different than years past, uh, from what I could tell. Right. Um, they typically will run you up uh, up and down twice, mm -hmm. and the second time kind of crosses, uh, cuts across the mountain. So why don't we just kind of get into it in the start? We're going to talk about the beast specifically now, and then we'll touch on uh, some strategies for the ultra uh, and maybe we'll touch on like what the super would look like too. Cause I think the super course, again, it's not, it's, pr it's probably pretty similar to what we would do in that fall race. Right. Right. I think so. Yeah. So the, it is a, a, an uphill start. You can see down here, it's going to be the same starting location as uh, typical. So it's pretty much right uphill. And you can see from the uh, elevation map, it's pretty steep. <laughs> so yeah. And you're going right from bottom to peak on this first climb. If you look at like how high it gets, like the highest point you hit is at, at the end of the first climb. So it's, it's pretty rugged too. Uh, in, in general, how would you approach the start of this like beast distance uh, on this course? Yeah. I remember um, anytime I've done this race, if they've often started it in this exact same way, almost mm -hmm. always actually. And um it's really easy to get caught up in climbing really hard, really fast. So one thing I always like to think of was just like trying to find a little bit of a rhythm in the climb. And you do not want to feel out of control on this first climb because th there's so much of the race to go. Um, and it is, it's, I, I would say the climbs are all runnable if you're, if you're a decent climber, but it's still very fatiguing. And like you said, it's rugged. It's a little more technical. Um, it's rocky and rooty leaves that like might uh, cover and cover things and change visibility. So um, yeah, I think the main thing there is uh, at least to start, like go out a little less um, hard than you think you need to, because uh, it's just, it's really tough to recover from really doing overdoing that first climb. And it's, it's, it's a long beast. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's going to take on the longer side than what, what we're typically, what we've been seeing this year in particular, uh, cause it is a lot of elevation gain. And like you mentioned, it's technical and it's going to be wet usually mm -hmm. too, just be because of the humidity. Uh, the weather's actually looking okay. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I think they had some rain either, uh, Monday or Tuesday, but now it's looking like it's going to be sunny for the rest of the week. And on the, the day of the race, like 
high thirties to mid fifties, I think. Yeah. That's like ideal. Honestly, it's perfect race weather. So it might be a little chilly in the morning, but, uh, but there might, there's definitely gonna be some moisture in the air. Uh, so again, it, some of the part, the, some of the running might be a little slippery just because of that. But yeah, I think you're right. You got to really take it easy on this and it's only just walls, uh, hurdles are going to just get in your way to break that rhythm. It looks like monkey bars are set on the uphill. Yes. And that can be tough. It can be tough. Mm -hmm. I know, I know they had the monkey bars, I think probably at the top here one year. So yeah. Fall. Yeah. Um, um, so they're the third obstacle and it looks like from here, it looks like they're kind of just like halfway up. So it does. they will be set on an uphill. And I remember they did this, uh, for the 2019 beast that I ran and um, it was challenging. It was hard to get enough momentum going into the first um, or grabbing the first rung and then continuing from there. I think I actually failed them in 2019 and had to do a penalty loop. There's no penalty loop here. It's burpees. Um, so it's going to be really important to gather all the momentum you can getting into those monkey bars. And if that's not a reason, if the, the distance in the terrain isn't a reason enough to go out, chill like this mm -hmm. should be you don't want to be uh pressing getting into this kind of out of breath i mean you're only <clears throat> three quarters of a mile in so you it, it's quite possible that you can get in over your head by that distance so just yep. making sure just get through this and, and make sure that you, you have some juice uh <clears throat> we get up to pipe layer around the top and and then we kind of cu cut around and come along to the i'm guessing this is about the peak or the peak looks like it is it is right at this part um, mm. right where the super changes to the beast. This is about the top. So this is going to be, looks like you're going to have a bit of a descent here and then a sharp uphill, um, before you get into this, uh, the traverse, the water crossing and the tube crawl. Um, mm. so it's also something to keep in mind once you're at that, this top, like you're going to be shooting down and then you have one more hard. And that's one thing about this course too, is that it feels like it's more than two climbs because of yes. things like this, right? Like this Yeah. Is it does have little climb. sharp, um, little bursts at points that are like not super long, but you're never really running flat. So it doesn't feel like it's just climb, break, climb, break. It's kind of just like climb, technical, rolly climb. Mm -hmm. um, again, all runnable. I think if you, if you pace it correctly, if, and if you've prepared for hills, but um, definitely not easy by any stretch, definitely on the technical side. Um, and one note I will say about this, this top part with the traverse and the, the water crossing um there are two parts. It looks like where we get to water one for the traverse and then one around mile 10, um, we're by the water, um, which is, uh, where the spear is actually, which is cool. But both times we come close to the water are some of the most beautiful portions of mm. the course. And like, for me, there's just like special memories there, but anyone who's racing, if it's for fun, if it's competitive, they like try to look up and take that in while you're there, because it's a really cool, um, part of the Northeast and the terrain there is just gorgeous. And um, yeah, you're just back in the woods in the middle of nowhere. So that's one of my favorite parts. I would definitely make sure to like take it in. Great point. Cause this is really, <laughs> this is really pretty. This and like Palmerton has the same type of beauty too. It's like, you're so mm -hmm. you're hurting so bad at this point. And the sun's probably coming up if you're, Oh, it's probably up at this point, but um, in toward the elite race, but definitely a good, a good scene up there. If you're able to have the wherewithal, which you should. And, and yeah, totally. <laughs> The for, like I'd mentioned, this was the first race that I'd done. I thought this was like the craziest mountain ever. <laughs> Just because yeah. it seemed like it was climbing. Like I like looking at a. If I was to look at the map now, I was like, we only went up twice. Mm -hmm. I would have said absolutely not. I would have guessed we went up like twenty times. Um, I, I remember we arrived in 2015, and my my dad came with me. And at this point, uh, what was I? I was uh. That was seven years ago. So I was like 18. So I was like super, super young and new into it. And we get there and I had never really run trails before. And you just see the start and it's, it's just this hill and there's no, there's no end to the hill in sight. And my dad's like, if you complete this, I will, I'll get you like whatever shirt you want from the merchandise. Center. <laughs> I was like, this is absolutely ridiculous. And now looking back, it's like, this is a small mountain, quote unquote, but it feels big in the moment. And it definitely presents all the challenges you'd get of kind of any mountain course. And we're getting close to 4,000 feet, I believe on the beast. Is that what? Is, yeah. I, I saw, saw four to almost five, uh, yeah. I think high force. And then uh, all, all I know is because the ultra said like 10, six or something like that. So it does not lack an elevation gain. It's always been one of the um, 
like the courses I've beast courses I've run with like the most gain. Yeah. It's a long one. Yeah. I thought that was kind of like the standard. Um, but it is one of the higher ones that will yeah. get yeah. Um, even something like Tahoe. I think it's kind of hovers around 35. Yeah. Um, so it just goes to show like these little ups and downs, they will uh, certainly add up and build on that fatigue. So again, being cautious, I, I'm, I'm cautious throughout this whole first loop, mm -hmm. I think. Um, coming around to eight, we have a stairway to Sparta, which is a penalty or eight is Z wall or seven foot wall. And then stair stairway to Sparta is nine, which there's a penalty loop. Um, mm -hmm. The beast is going to have the rock holds yep. typically. So if you are an athlete who has um, maybe not as strong as uh, grip strength or you're uh, shorter in stature, it can be hard to, to get through stairway to Sparta. So maybe consider um, the penalty loop there. It's been pretty short in the past on stairway to Sparta, but I don't, who knows what this is going to look like. I mean, it's like at the top of the mountain, so it could, it could send you back up. Right. I'm very curious to see what they do with the penalty loops. That's something I'm always looking out for because um, in the past, they have been somewhat of an advantage sometimes, depending on how they set it up. I know there was a big controversy in West Virginia last mm -hmm. year about the penalty loop for stairway. And at, at that point, uh, that was something I still struggled with. And I'll probably still struggle with it here. It's definitely not an easy obstacle. I would like to think I'm better prepared for it. Um, but uh, in West Virginia, the penalty loop took less time than getting over stairway did. So you, you can kind of, sometimes you'll be able to see how big the loop is and then you make the judgment call from there. Yeah. So uh, definitely give it an attempt or two, but don't, don't spend time trying to gear up and, and time and, and energy. It. Cause it's, yeah. it's a hard obstacle too. For sure. So after that, it looks like you get a bit of a descent that runs down. It's going to be a bit of a longer problem. I'm assuming it's going to be pretty technical in here too, until yeah. you get back into, uh, looks like it, it makes a sharp turn and heads back up right around mile, uh, mile five here. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is one of those things. It's not a big, crazy descent because of the sharp ups and downs. So you're going to get another climb up, another couple of climbs in this part as well before you can really kind of get get going again until um the spear okay so i know where the spear so this spear is actually set a bit on a pitch as well um so it yep. is going to be downhill at, at this point um usually it is um that's north no i which direction would this at the uh is that it north looks like here? it's so north is kind of down to the bottom left it looks like yeah so then uh, this would be whatever. It's usually facing uh, <laughs> this direction. You're asking uh, the complete wrong person. Yeah, yeah. Do not this, ask me directions. This <laughs> orient has me all, has me all goofed up. Um, so a, a relatively easy spear. What do you think about the spear placement for something like this in uh, about it's right before the sixth mile? Yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying to picture it. So I misspoke before when I said the spear was by the water. I was looking at the mile 10 marker mm -hmm. and then looked at the, the obstacle 10. But yes, so the spear is... Yeah, it's, it's not like you're coming down from the first descent. Um, that's nice in that you should be a little more recovered um, going into it. You're not like redlining to the top of the mountain and having to do it. Um, I think a lot of people will like this because it gives you more time to recover from a missed spear. And there is no penalty loop here. It's burpees. Um, and in a beast, the longer the race, the more time you have to make up ground. Right. So mm -hmm. um a miss spear here versus I've had races at this very venue actually where the spear is very close to the end and there's not much you can do to make up time in that case. Um, so I think it works in most people's favor. And I would say that there's so much race left after this spear that you should not be disheartened if you miss the spear. Um, but if you make the spear, use it as a time to, to put an acceleration on people, um, especially because you still have a little bit of a dis descent to go use that energy and kind of gain seconds there until you have to start climbing again. Yeah. It's interesting when it's in the middle like this because of how much race is left, like you were saying. So like it's an easy spot to miss and then become discouraged because of it, but there is yep. still a, a, a huge climb and yep. we haven't really gotten to any of the failable obstacles up until this right. point outside of uh, monkey bars and stairway. Um, right. <clears throat> so just make, make your spear. Uh, yeah. And I should, I should know like, some of this area in here, it's going to be pretty gnarly. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. Some of the downhills are really kind of sketchy, even though they're not very long. They're super steep. Um, a lot of like grabbing down. tree limbs on your way down to help your to keep yourself up. That kind of stuff. It's going to be steep and rocky. Um, 
definitely more moist because of the weather here. Like expect mud for sure. Um, but it's also really fun. Like it's just like keeps you on your toes, but it's a blast. This course, this course is just gnarly. So, yes. th- so, th- so then we're getting back down to where the finisher uh, festival area is, uh, and we get a little bit of a gauntlet in here with inverted wall, rolling mud, dunk wall, slip wall. That typical like kind of one obstacle that yeah. counts as like three or four. Um, usually it's at set going downhill. So the slip wall, you're going to run downhill and then up the, the slip wall. It looks like it's going to be about the same. And then it's, uh, Z wall. Z wall. It's After a tough, the dunk. tough, wall, tough spot for a Z wall for mm-hmm. sure. That can be one that trips people up without them really thinking it's going to, I always get nervous for it because it's one of those that like, if you get it, you get no credit because it's supposed to be easy. And then if you fail it, it's like extremely embarrassing. <laughs> so, um, that's available. To really pay attention to it's super failable, like one little slip, especially coming out of a dunk wall. So I would caution people to be pretty careful going into that after getting soaking wet, pick your spots. And uh, the terrain in general on this course is going to be, uh, pretty undulating and pitched in a direction or, yep. or so. So make sh- so it's not going to be like a stadium where it's going to be even on both sides. So make sure if you're, if you take a look at that wall and you see which direction it might be pitched in, that you pick the opposite side. So you're not like leaning back against the wall and like holding on for dear life. So you can lean into the wall makes it a little bit easier. Um, so just take a little bit of time. Like your heart rate should be down after yep. something like dunk wall and slip wall. So just come up toward it. And for those of you who have missed a spear, know this is coming and this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem today. That's true. Um, My two, my kind of process for the Z wall is first to look at um, that pitch. Like you said, you want to pick the side, whichever, because there are multiple lanes, but pick the side that is um, not tilting back. Um, If anything, try to find the one that's, you're going to be leaning forward into the wall. And then um, once you find that, uh, does it work in favor of being able to turn the blind corner first? Mm -hmm. So um, ideally, you want to choose the side that will allow you to get around the corner um, where you have to where the, the walls are angled so that it's pointing into you versus like pointing out away from you. I'm not quite sure how to describe that, but yeah, if that lines up with the tilt, that's the best option. Yes. Yeah. So they can really lean into it when you're reaching around when you when you can't see that handhold potentially. Right. Um, great point. So it looks like that's going to be headed up. So after Z wall, you have Atlas, uh, and then into a sandbag, which looks like it's which typically there usually is a carry in here. Uh, there's been like a couple. Maybe there hasn't been sand, like more than one sandbag before, but it's usually pretty wooded. It's going to be yep. something like how that second sandbag carry was in West Virginia last year, where it could be pretty yeah. technical. Uh, you'll probably get an up and a down in here. I'm yeah, guessing. it looks like we have a climb to start it and then come back down. Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, it does look like that. So, okay. yeah, I would expect this to be up and down. So uh, this could be a good spot if you are a good technical descender. Uh, this is a good advantage for you because it kind of amplifies the descent for people who aren't very good at it. When they have something on their back, it, it makes them be really careful. But if you're able to kind of just crush downs, um, this could be a pretty good spot. And it's right around the halfway mark. Um, yeah. And, then when you and that's it, also a good indicator of when maybe you can start to push a little more, like we were saying, to come out a little more conservative. Um if you're not a strong carrier, maybe after that point, you know, to amp it up a little bit, or if you are a strong carrier, that could be your indication to like start going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. That's a great, this could be a good, I would circle this as Mm -hmm. a potential place to go. The only problem is directly after it's like four obstacles in a row. (laughs) Yeah. This is an interesting little mid race gauntlet here. It is. I don't remember maybe in past there has been this area uh, where they have had things like Olympus. I remember that being yeah. kind of in the middle of the race somewhere. Um, yep. But this is just going to be uh, barbed wire, A-frame, Twister, and Beater. So yeah. Interesting that Twister and Beater both have penalty loops. Um, I'm, I'm assuming, they're probably assuming people are going to fail one or the other. Um, because if you get through Twister, you're going to have be fatigued for Beater, and that makes it harder. So maybe they're looking to not clog up burpee pits. I don't know. Maybe um, that's not, a bad that's idea. a challenge. That's definitely something to look out for. Yeah. That, that, that's interesting. Um, so yeah. So, so coming out of sandbag, know what you're going to do, but know that you got to get through these obstacles first before you can really kind of make a decisive move. Yeah. Uh, Callie, how do you get through Twister? So um, I've done it 
various ways. If the grip feels super stable and dry, um, I find the um, the forward swing is actually really nice. Like the monkeying through it where you grab with one, um, like your right palm facing inward and then you mm-hmm. swing and grab with your left palm facing inward and you're just facing forward. But my go-to approach is typically the side on matching technique just because mm-hmm. um, when it is a little slick or if I'm not completely secure in my grip or if my hands are tired, um, it helps to kind of just get into a rhythm where you swing your legs as your hands are going and you match, match, match. But the one thing to be aware of is you want to get on the side of twister where you're pulling the bars towards you as opposed to pushing them away from you as you grab them. Um, So there's a rotation to the bar. And if you're picturing it, I'm a righty and I will typically go leading with my right hand. Um, So I could either grab it where when I grab with my right hand, Um, and I'm leading with my right hand, I'm, it comes down with my right hand as opposed to down into the left, as opposed to into me and to the right when I Mm. grab it. Hmm. Um, and the into me and to the right is how I want it because the momentum of the bar is coming towards me as opposed to away from me where I'm more likely to slip off. It just feels a little less secure. Um, and I've made the mistake of grabbing it the wrong way because it's actually kind of hard to tell in the moment, like your race brain is like going and you're like, you think you're grabbing it for the right direction, but you're not. So just be aware of the way it's spinning. Um, and you want the bar to be coming inwards to you as you grab it. Yeah, that's interesting. I haven't even really thought about it in that. I generally will go backwards and I don't know if that matters uh, as okay. much. I don't um, think so for backwards. No, um, I don't have like the thoracic mobility to go backwards. I've tried it before. It like, doesn't work. But. Ends up being a lot of bicep too, mm-hmm. you know? So uh, it's not, I wouldn't say it's, more efficient it's just a little mm. bit safer for me when it, if it's totally. like wet or something so it's it is like pro- it's faster too out. yeah it can be i mean if you can monkey it's faster than the side by side match for sure but if yep. you can monkey through it you can kind of get through it pretty quick yeah <laughs> um and you can si- if you're really struggling you can side by side match every single hold or if you have enough reach and you're feeling okay grip wise you can skip um mm. you can like match on every other one um the reach isn't super far. So that will save you a little bit of time, but uh, that's typically the most secure way I'd say. And then coming out of that, it's, it's beater, not a ton to say about that. Just making sure that uh, you kind of line it up in the beginning, because it's not always the same pattern on beater. Do you have any mm-hmm. t- uh, tips on beater or? Yeah. Um, so I found that if there's uh, ever any uh, moisture or if it's slick at all, the best approach is probably going to be, um, at least when you're trying to go grab that, uh, the highest one, typically it's like a low, high, low kind of setup. They, they sometimes change it, but grabbing the highest one, it's probably going to be best to, um, uh, grab with that underhand approach so that your mm-hmm. fingers are pointing back at you. And that, um, is a way to prevent yourself slipping off as you swing from the highest one to the next one. Cause if it's the slightest bit wet and you grab with that overhand, you're, if you're not completely stable, you're likely to, as the bar swings you down, your hand swings underneath and you just slip right off. And that's happened to me a lot. So that <laughs> underhand is the most secure I've found. Going, going mixed grip is, yep. is certainly, is certainly the, the, the move on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and this- then don't, uh, sorry. <laughs> One last thing is don't forget, um, that you can try to lache too. So I've often found myself at a point where I'm on the lower beater bar and I don't even want to make the effort to grab that other bar before swinging to the bell. You can just mm. swing on there. Like, um, I don't, I don't know what, like, <laughs> like you can be on that moving bar, swing yourself back and forth a bit. It's typically mm. not so far that it's not impossible to leave with a jump from that bar, like a big swing and just mm-hmm. hit the bell in the air. If you're confident with your coordination. And depending on the, on how wet it is, yeah. That's usually a big indicator for like, it, like you get those races in slow or big bear where it's super dry, like a lache is going to be a, a, a viable option for this. It could be because we were saying the weather might not be that bad. So if that is something that seems okay and the bars feel sticky yeah. like that, then I would definitely go for it. Uh, after beater, this is where I would have my race circled here mm. because of this running part. It's not that it's not incredibly as steep as the first one. Cause you're cutting across the mountain at this point. So it's not straight up. Right. And, the, and this footing from what I remember, isn't this isn't as poor as it is on that first climb. So if you have, 
if running and non-technical running is a strength of yours, like this is going to be a pretty good section for you to really kind of open up. Um, and you're going to get about a mile yeah. or so um, of some good running here. So if that is somewhere that you need to take advantage of, then you, you kind of, this is where it needs to be. Um, and then just like Bender is the only thing in your way. And then you loop back into here, which I'm guessing is going to be pretty technical at this point. It looks like you're just kind of at the top of the mountain, but so it looks like you're probably kind of cutting through um, just some of the brush, but it doesn't look like it's tremendously, it's not super steep. Um, I would just count on the footing, not being great, but there's really not many obstacles here. So you, mm -mm. Like, I said a mile, but it's looking more like, let's say there's a seven and a half uh, all the way until like mile, well, it's 23, eight foot wall, nothing until like mile 11. Wow. So this is a really huge chunk of running here. It is. <laughs> so if you're, if running is your strength, this is really where you need to go uh, right after beater. If that's where you uh, think you need to kind of make up ground, this is, this is your time. That's like three and a half ish over three and a half miles of not that terrible of running. Like, no, and the only obstacle there is a wall mm -hmm. is and bender. Bender. And which, then, and then what, wow. Once armor. you get to armor, which is the single arm, uh, uh, single handle atlas yeah. carry, like a farmer's single, single arm farmer's carry. And then you're going to start the, the descent, I believe, here. So it goes armor, uh, Olympus, box. Um, and then you start to go down. So Olympus, this is a tough spot for Olympus. Yeah, that is. Um, it's interesting, though, because at least, well, they put armor kind of close to it beforehand, but armor shouldn't be too taxing on the grip, I don't think. And your mm -hmm. grip has gotten a big chance to recover after that three and a half miles. Um, but yeah, Olympus and then into the box. Again, two penalty loop obstacles right next to each other, which is interesting. Um, but that is... Uh, that, that whole three and a half mile stretch is kind of like a good race reset. If you feel like your obstacles haven't been going well, it's like at that point, it's a new race, to be mm -hmm. honest. It completely separates itself from everything else. Um, but yeah, tough combination of uh, Olympus and the box after. Yeah, because that's what can happen in these races, right? There's multiple stages in these races and like for your mentality as well. Like if things are going well, things can go poorly really quickly. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you got to have to like, so this could be like a third segment of this race. Um, <clears throat> Olympus just in general for this, it, like your grip might be okay. It's probably going to be slippery. I wouldn't go feet. I would, I would go knees almost immediately. Uh, and just like general fatigue is where I'm worried about something like that. This, this spot, like yes. 11 miles into a hard beast, you've done all the ascending. So you've done uh, yep. close to 4,000 feet of climbing to this point. You're just going to be tired. Yeah, definitely. And Olympus is still one I struggle with. Um, I have been trying to practice, but it really comes down to a lot of lock off strength. Um, mm. And de depending on, again, the moisture conditions, your the chains are probably not going to be a safe bet mm -hmm. um, unless you're extremely confident in that grip. But the holds and uh, the holes, like the little, like H O L E S mm -hmm. are going to be the, the best for you. Um, then the rock climbing holds to keep you high chains are a bit of a risk here. The first time I did Olympus was in Tahoe in 2017. I think this must've been, and I went through it just chains. Like got my feet up, went chains. I was like, this is the easiest obstacle I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> and then I came and then the next race I did was New Jersey that fall, 2018, tried the chain slipped right off. Yeah, <laughs> like off the it's first completely chain. different. I like it's crazy. I was like, oh, this is actually a very, very difficult obstacle. <laughs> um, so yeah, so whatever strategy you have, like I said, I would go knees, lock out right away. Uh, there's a couple different uh thoughts on this, like try to get through it as fast as you can, <laughs> right? Just so you're yeah. not on it as long because mm -hmm. you can spend a lot of time on this thing and like have it really be a struggle by like the halfway, the three quarter mark. So just kind of gun it and just, yeah. just just try to get there um because at then you're headed to the descent of the uh, the final descent of this race um so and it's i think it, it's pretty steep i mean this is going to be the pride it's it kind of matches the grade of the first climb so i i, I remember this being a pretty fast and crazy descent 
I've actually lost control of my legs on this downhill before. <laughs> so um, there was one race where it was extremely muddy and we ended up just like sliding down. I would fall and just keep sliding and it was just as fast as running. But then <laughs> um, there was th that 2019 beast. I remember just, it was, it was a hard race. There was some good competition there. So I was working. And at that point, like I could barely feel my legs because the descent was quite steep. So you, you want to definitely like keep control of your body, like brace your core because leaning too far forward, you might just trip and tumble, but, um, it, it's a fun one too. Like if, if you're confident in your downhills, this is a time to really like make up ground. And it's nice that it's the indicator that this race is almost over. Yep. <laughs> I've yep. never, I don't think I've ever wanted this race to continue on and No. Get, getting no. to the, getting to the gauntlet at the end here. I'm always like, okay, then, then so this, <laughs> this is like a, it's like a celebration. This descends like a celebration of this race being totally. done. Uh, so you get helix down here. Um, it's, this might be a problem if you're cramping, uh, mm. which is very well in the, in the realm of possibilities for this race. Um, but just take your time, uh, know where your hands are going to go, know where your feet are going to go. Don't like hope to figure it out as you're, as like, once you move something, if you're have any skill in rock climbing at all, it shouldn't, shouldn't really be a problem. Mm. Um, then we get to that last gauntlet, which is multi-rig, bucket, rope climb, hercoist, vertical cargo, and the fire jumps. So this is pretty standard for this course. Yeah, this this course always has that finishing gauntlet like that. Some mix of some tough, some some less tough obstacles, but a lot right in that finish. Um, the rig is going to be interesting because Beast Course usually have the ropes. Um, yeah. So that's one where you should be like looking out for that. Um, maybe like before you hop on the rig, just check it out. Uh, like if you're confident in it, maybe just take a peek before you actually get on the rig. Cause you don't want those ropes to just kind of surprise you. <laughs> um, but they're, they're tricky. In West Virginia, which was August of last year, 2021, they subbed out the thin ropes to yep. thicker ropes. So if you yes. haven't raced a beast distance in the Northeast since, uh, since I don't know, Vernon, I don't even know if Vernon happened last year, whatever, Wh whenever your yeah. last beast was, it might not have been a beast in the Northeast since then or Killington or, or wherever you were. Um, the ropes are thick now. Yep. Yeah. So just something to be, to be wary of. And it could make it a little more challenging because they're newer. They might be a little more slick. Um, I don't know. Do you find the thicker ropes harder or easier? Well, I, I find ropes more challenging in general. I think the thicker ones, it depends on where you grab them because uh, the thin ones, if there were no knot there, they would be really tricky too. Cause mm -hmm. it, like there's only so much your hand can grip onto, but thin with a knot, I would say is better than thick without a knot. Right. Um, in West Virginia. And we clarified this in other races too. You can grab the top where it attaches to a rope that's holding it up. And that's what I actually ended up doing in West Virginia to get through these because we were said, it was said we were allowed to grasp the rope that was holding the rope, <laughs> meaning like the string um, we could grab there. So uh, that's something I'll personally probably clarify again, just in case, because you never know. Um, but I always try to look to skip them if I can. Like just don't touch the ropes at all if it's possible. I've even, I've had a hand on each rope before and I've just kind of like swung myself back and forth thinking that I wasn't going to be able to, to take a hand off of either of them. Yep. And I've been able to swing myself into the bell while holding on to the rope. Yeah. Yes, and so I, that. I did that on the Tarzan swing in Killington last mm. year. Um, I, my thought process was the more I let go of with each hand, the more likely it is I'm going to fall just because you, you swam into this. So you're soaking wet. And it's just ropes with knots. And I literally um, reached as far as I could to get to the first one, swung, grabbed the second one, and then just generated enough momentum by pulling back and forth. So then I could just lache and hit the bell from that because I didn't want to have to grab another rope. Right. So if you're if you're stuck there, know that that's something that uh, that's a way to kind of get through it. Yeah. Um, bucket carry. That's going to be tough at the end here. Is it going to be really short? Which number is it? It's 32. Uh, 32. Yeah, you can't even really see the loop for it. They've had nasty bucket carries here before, yeah. but, but it would be right at the foot of the, like, of this, um, right at the start of this gauntlet. So it just yep. kind of sends you back up. It doesn't look like it's going to be like that. 
No, that which is interesting because they have a perfect hill to use for it. So I'm wondering why they didn't do that. But um, yeah, unless they like kind of go up in the middle, because um, like you come down from one side and you go up the other side, unless they utilize that incline in the middle. But I don't think there's much like trail there or path. So I don't know how big it's going to be. I would anticipate it being pretty short. They've had short carries um, yeah. this year so far. Yep. So... I don't know. I'm guessing it's it's just going to be a, a shorter one. Ooh, rope climb right after that too. That's that's not easy. I think rope climbs are exhausting to be honest. Um, so when you're fatigued, I, I'll I'll be honest. I failed the rope climb here in 2019 at the end of the beast. I was so exhausted. Um, this was the one where I could, was not feeling my legs on the downhill, and I failed the rope climb because it was super muddy. Um, my I couldn't feel my hands because it was a little chilly, and then my my whole body was shaking. So. Um, I never rule that out. I, I never look at the rope climb and I'm like, Oh, easy. Yeah. Yeah. I associate this point of the race and then, mm -hmm. and then her course after, and then you, <laughs> the worst part about this course is that you're at this gauntlet. You have to run up a little tiny hill Yes. <laughs> at the very end. You think you're just going to run to it, but you got to go up this hill and it's, it's just like, it's, it's really hard to run. <laughs> that hill is so hard. Like it's so it, hard. It's physically like. <laughs> It almost feels worse than the other climbs just because the finish line is literally a turn away and you're just like, I can't climb. Anymore. And it's just like, it's like the ultimate like false peak. And when mm -hmm. I, the first one, once or twice did this too, I was like, no, we're going yeah. back up. <laughs> right. Oh my God. I, like thinking that we were doing more, it's like, uh, but it's like, you go up and it's, it's enough of a climb that's annoying. And then it's <laughs> vertical cargo. Plus how do you get up? How do you get over the wall? Is that, is that not a problem for you at all? Uh, over which one? So the, it has the platform on Vertical Cargo Plus. Oh, oh, um, oh, with the Irish tables. Uh, yeah. Typically, so on an uphill, that can be challenging. Um, for me, though, like if you look at like height to the height of the table proportions, that's like chest height on me versus like over the heads of some other girls. So you're, you're almost able to have your hands on and just kind of. Pretty much. Them. I kind of just run, jump and try to throw my leg over as, as quickly as possible. Um, I've heard for shorter people, the kind of upside down flip technique works where you go under the table, grab it um, with your palms facing you in an underhand yeah, yeah. hold and flip yourself over, which apparently is easier than it looks. But to me, that looks difficult. Pretty, so. pretty sketch. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, I was actually in fifth place in, in the November race one time and mm. the person in fourth couldn't get it. Oh so like, gosh. yeah, so I was, they, they were doing burpees and I was able to get over it. There is a, a technique that's almost like a muscle up, like, yep. because when it's wet too, it's like, hard, you can like slip off real easy. I've done that before. I've kind of jump, I've jumped, been able to jump up, but my hips didn't quite get there and it just swung me underneath. And then you just kind of like fall yep. and I fell flat on my back. So getting up there and like kind of, um, Someone explained to me once, kind of like putting your, there's like a very faint, like little crack that separates the, the platform and you can kind of get your like fingers in there just a little bit to create a little bit of leverage and then kind of push yourself down. You can kind of do like a muscle up to get up no. there. Um, now you're talking about the, the space between like the rim of the table and the actual surface of the table or which, which the, crack. So the table, it's very faint. It would just be like the table. That's like, there's like two pieces of the table that like fixed together. Okay. Like that would be, uh, yeah. It's like, like you the wouldn't scheme. Even it's like the seam. Okay. Yeah. That's a better way to put it. Gotcha. Uh, so, I mean, you don't get much grip out of that thing, like at all. And it might even not be worth doing it. You probably still do the muscle up anyway, but, uh, I would try, <laughs> I would try to get over this. However, I could, I'm not trying to do burpees at this point. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And it looks like if that's where it is, um, it looks like we're, that's at the uphill, like that little hill we were talking about. So you're going to need to get some run momentum into this because like you, that's not something where you can typically stationary, just jump onto it. So you're going to have to run this little hill, which is really brutal um, to get up on this thing. I hope that's not the case. I remember in, in that November race there, you went around it. Okay. When you start to come back down to the fire jump, and it was that like, would be nicer. Yeah, I think that I would imagine that's what it's going to be. Okay. Um, and then just jump out of the fire. Uh, Kelly, what are you going to? You're doing the ultra. We don't have too much time to spend on it, but what are you going to wear in terms of gear? Like, what footwear is, yeah. is going to be like? Okay. Uh, so I've been thinking a lot about this just because this is supposed to be my first ultra. Um, and I have been testing the VJ Ultra, actually. Um, I've been looking for something. I'm someone who really likes a lot more cushion in my shoes than some others. 
and I wanted something with grip. And especially here, you don't want, it's a balance between what's cushiony and what's unstable. Um, because here you have so many rocks and roots, you don't want something super high off the ground. So I found that um, the VJ Ultra feels cushioned, but I also don't feel super high up on their foam. And um, the grip has been phenomenal. And the, the space in the shoe um, has been working for me. I actually wore them in the uh, long ruck in the go ruck games last weekend and they felt really good. So I think that's what I'm going to go with for shoes, but also pack um, my Nike Pegasus. I struggle to find shoes to run in. So I have the Nike peg trail mm. shoes. And if my feet are really um, beat up after the first lap, m maybe change into them unless I'm not confident in their footing. Um, Cause they just have a little more cushion. And support. Yeah. So you're looking for more of the, uh, the, the cushion end than any part of the, the technical part. And yeah. Um, and VJ is supposed to have the good grip piece to it, which should be helpful on, right. on this course. Um, cool. All right. Well, that, that wraps us up. If you're out there, say hello to Callie. She'll be doing a bunch of loops. She'll be <laughs> trying to down. give her the support. Uh, so yeah. And again, this course is, it's brutal. It's nasty, but there's the finish that you get on a course like this is just like, the feeling is just so good. It's it really just, is. And there's nothing like it. It's kind of like a flagship Spartan course. It's been around for a long time. It's got some history to it. And I think the vibes there are just um, really enjoyable and they make you work for it. But um, it's a fun, fun day. It is. All right, cool. That'll wrap it up for us. Make sure to give us a like, get us, hit us up with a subscribe to make sure you get all of the map reviews and the other type of content with race recaps and things like that so we can get straight directly to your feed. All right, Ooh. see ya.